Welcome to this week's Disruptors in the Culture. I am Amira Smith, and I'm joined by our my also awesome co-host, Joshua Meekins. Thank you. Uh, this week, we are joined by uh, another great friend of mine, a creative in his own right, um, Tayo, who actually is, I would say, like my favorite photographer in the game. But um, hey. he does quite an amazing job capturing the Black essence, the Black culture, um, the Black diaspora, and all rights. And um, he hasn't missed so far, man. His lenses, his lens aims true. So, um, Tyo, without further ado, I want you to um, tell the people about you know who you are and how do you define what you do. Well, Amira, Josh, thank you so much for sharing your 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 whole platform with me. Um, like you said, my name is Tyo. Um, go as Tyo Jr. on social media. I am an artist, a photographer, creative director, art director, um, and my whole platform is you know built on curating a museum of emotions basically what that means is I just try to make people feel different things with the work I put out with my projects with my photos the goal is just to always have an impact a lasting impact on my audience and anyone that views my work um whether positive whether negative I just want to take you on an emotional trip throughout you know my portfolio as you go through my work wow. yeah okay <laughs> oh. how, I mean, all sorry, right I mean, so what what kind of initially well how long have you been a photographer and what like sparked your initial interest in it so this is um i would say i had the interest in photography before i even knew i had that interest um and what i mean by that is I was always big into fashion, um, fashion and style uh, since since middle school. You know, I was always I was well, it started with being a sneakerhead and then, you know, more into like, you know, clothes and all of that. Um, so I would say in high school, I got really big on Tumblr, which was this blogging platform, you know, where people would just post dope pics. They would um, either pics that they took pics that were already on the website and platform and just like curate their own blog you know and everyone would have their own dope blog you could follow each other repost you know everyone would have their own theme whether it be sneakers cars uh lifestyle all this you know different different things and you know mine was mostly about fashion and like street style um i think that's like where i curated that eye um for photography before i knew i was actually interested in photography um so, you know, that, that interest kind of carried on through college, got to Philly, and I didn't even have an actual camera. I would always just shoot on my iPhone. Um, and that's when, like, a lot of people just posted iPhone pics on Instagram, um, you know, just snapping shit as they, go, as they walked around to live their lives. And, you know, that kind of, that interest started to, become more refined and I started to realize, okay, I actually, you know, don't just like fashion and all that. I actually like, you know, taking photos. I actually like, you know, you know, taking cool photos too, not just your, your regular food pick, you know, like actual photos. Um, and started out with just like cityscapes, you know, architecture in Philly. Obviously Philly has some dope ass um, buildings and structures, especially in old city. So I'd be there a lot and um, kind of timed it with my major because I was a civil engineering major. So like, you know, building structures, that was all the stuff that I was interested in. And as time progressed, um, I finally got a first real camera and, you know, and then I started getting more into shooting people. Um, this was mostly like event photography, campus events, um, fraternity events, um graduations just like small things when people start realizing okay you know this dude he has a camera it wasn't even that he's like he takes photos like he has a camera so let's just you know let's get him for this let's get him for that so you know it was more like a like a little side hustle to be honest um you know being broke in college anything to make a little extra change Absolutely. so um i never really thought of it as anything more than like okay i like taking pictures people want me to take pictures for their for their for their events so you know, why not make a little money on the side while doing it? Um, 
And then like my senior year, a good friend of mine, his sister is a, is a blogger. Um, and she reached out to me like, hey, I want to do a, a blog shoot for my next post. And that was the first time that I actually had to like craft and um, be very intentional with how I, how I shot this subject. And I still remember we went to the, the Philly Art Museum and you know the, the dope columns in the front and yeah. you know I was just playing around with that and I was like oh okay you know this is this is actually I think I actually have like an eye for this you know because the, the photos actually came out really dope um that was the first time I actually like tried to like really edit the photos to not just mm. look how they came out of the camera um and the rest is history after that I've just been developing more so just just shooting honestly it wasn't even like I was really trying to take it anywhere I was just having fun with it um and just started so, shooting more so that was senior year and you started like yeah. what year in college about so said? I would say I got the camera on my so Rexel has five five uh, it was a five-year program I was in so yes. it's freshman um sophomore pre-junior junior senior year I started towards the end of my pre-junior year that's when I got my actual camera no my junior year sorry my junior year my, my fourth year of college yeah would you say you so, felt you felt like you were a professional like like you considered yourself a professional like oh I'm a professional photographer oh, absolutely not <laughs> really? I absolutely did not no um I did not consider myself professional at all like I said I was just I had the interest in photography and then I got the camera and then people were like oh you know, he has a camera because not many people on campus had a camera, you know. So whenever it was time for an event or whenever someone was graduating, they obviously don't want iPhone pics. They want something more um, that looks a lot more refined. So there are only a handful of people that had a camera on campus. So I was just like tapped. Um, and But yeah, I never, <laughs> I never considered myself a professional photographer in, in school. Um, it was all just a hobby. Like I said, a hobby that just kind of was a little extra stream of income for you know a broke college kid. <laughs> I will um, say Tum yeah. Tumblr would do that to you because I was on Tumblr <laughs> and yeah, man. I mean, my Tumblrs, I got two of them. They still out there, but they that was an inspiring place. It really yeah. was. Yeah, um, yeah, Tumblr was a place where I used to actually like journal on Tumblr. I wish I could find my my login and stuff, <laughs> but. When I was, you know, just all that teenage angst, all that, all those yeah. feelings, all that. So that's where I kind of like let everything loose and just like kind of disconnected. So then when I was able to actually kind of start to create the photos I saw on Tumblr, it was like, okay, um, that's kind of how I like fell off the platform. Because yeah. then I was actually like actually taking photos instead of just reposting things on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can you, so you talked about how that first, Philadelphia shoot that first time the blogger reached out that was your first shoot that was your first process the first time creating your process how would you say your process now looks compared to your process then oh man each different opportunity was just like you know more practice for me whereas now it's like all right I have all the I have all the tools in my kit I'm like I'm being very selective everything's more um the methods and my madness now and I'm, I'm very strategic about what I shoot who I shoot um, and my goal behind each shoot whereas before I had no goal the goal was just to you know let, let's do this let's make this bread um so like that was that was it for real wow that's crazy okay so I admit I didn't know your work until mm -hmm. Josh mentioned your name and I said well let me go look and I immediately was like damn like the I, I'm I'm a fan because it's not just some people take really good photos right mm -hmm. but you make your subjects look luminous like it's mm -hmm. almost like this glow from within their skin where I was just mm -hmm. like what is what is this what is this process how did you I guess it's like kind of like how did you develop your style because I do see a style right I see a style that's like consistently woven throughout your work that I've seen and I'm just like how huh, did you was that like a conscious decision was there like a declaration at some point where you're like okay this is how a tile photo looks 
Well, first of all, thank you. That's that's music to my ears. Uh, not the fact that you're a fan, but the fact that you know you see a style within my photos because that's something that has taken years to to build. Um, and there wasn't that one moment where it was like, all right, this is my style. But I think when you just start to do something over and over and over again, you just kind of develop that. And that was developed through one studying, um, studying different photographers that I was, you know, inspired by. You know, when I when I decided I was going to really take this, take photography seriously after graduation, that's when I was like, okay, you know, I can't just be doing random random shoots with random people. You know, I need to like really hone down. And the first thing was, you know, find my own voice, find my style with my photos, um, because that's what really separates photographers from each other, you know, the ability to, you know, have that distinct aesthetic where people see a photo and they're like, oh yeah, he shot that. Um, or, you know, yeah, she shot that. Um, and like I said, I just, I took years of really practicing. Um, you know, I would, as Instagram developed, there were a lot more photographers on the platform. So I'll start to follow these people, follow the ones that, you know, whose work spoke to me. And I started out really just trying to, I mean, to be, to be honest, trying to imitate what they did. And that was really just to build my own skill set. Mm. So if I saw something that I really liked about someone's photo, like, wow, he really knows how to capture detail. How does he capture that much detail while keeping, um, you know, the photo cr crisp, clean, and not making it look like he's edited it too much. Mm. So I would go out, shoot a lot of stuff and really try and bring that out in my work. And there would be another guy like, okay, I really like how he uses color in his photos. I really like how he makes the tones. Um, you know, you could tell the person is dark skin, but you can't tell, like, you don't, you don't know, I don't know exactly how he made her color like that, but that have that glow, have mm -hmm. that richness. Um, and you know, I would start to bring that out, just practice, you know, different editing styles, different editing techniques. And then, you know, once I found something that I really liked, it just kind of stuck with me throughout all my photos. And then I would just start to build on that and build on that and build on that. So it became, you know, my aesthetic. While I might've been inspired by someone else, I kind of just grew and, you know, taking bits and pieces from everyone that inspired me and, you know, adding my own twist to it to, to make it my own. And yeah, it wasn't like, like I said, it wasn't like that one moment, like, ah, this is the tile formula. It was just more so like, you know, I really like how this kind of, this kind of style works with me and my photos. And being that a lot of my, you know, a, lot, a lot of my subjects are, you know, black people. Um, it just has a nice effect. Like you said, that luminous glow where the melanin just really starts to shine through the photo. Absolutely. Because um, that was a question, too, of like, like, are there techniques that you want to share, like helping you master <laughs> capturing Black people? Because we know um, a lot of like photography or mediums that capture people or just capture images, they weren't always developed with, um, even like with iPhones and stuff, they aren't developed with people of color in mind, right? And then we see that with a lot of technology, whether it's um, the facial recognition things, um, even hand, like when you go to wash your hands, the sensors, they don't often read darker skin, darker skin. So like when it comes to like the cameras and are you still, dig do you use digital or are you like still shooting on film or? So I, I started on digital and now I've started to shoot film. Um, so now I, 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 I do both on all my shoots and, you know, intertwine both. Um, just to really just one, become more versatile. I felt like I can't really call myself a photographer if, if I can't shoot a film camera. If I don't know what it takes to, you know, really work a shot and not have, you know, sensors, automatic sensors, you know, tell me what I need to do and how to compose my shot. Like, mm -hmm. if I really want to call myself a photographer, then I've got to do it how the old school photographers did, you know, with a light meter and, you know, trying to, you know, figure shit out on my own. Um, so 
Yeah, I do film now. Do, so are there any techniques that you feel like you've picked up along the way specifically for darker skin tones to like capture it, it with the beauty that you do? Because we know there are times where we see photos of different publications and it might be a famous person and you've seen them photographed hundreds, thousands of times and you're like, they don't quite look like that. Or like, wow, they made him look very flat or, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I've seen some big photographers where there was blowback of them photographing you know famous athletes and things that people would be like they made her look a certain way or you know um so anything you want to share or is that like too much of the tale to um <laughs> so to be honest um that's something that you have to practice mm. like I could say all these things um but the thing with photography is that it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all craft or art you know, you really have to be able to adapt to whatever scene setting and um, just system that you're in, whatever you're shooting in. Because I can tell you one thing right now that can work in a natural light setting, but then you put it, put that same subject with the same settings in a studio and that photo will look ashy. It will look ill-composed. Um, but once you have that practice and know like, okay, this, this is how dark skin can be shot or this is how, you know, melanin can be shot in this mm -hmm. type of situation. And I know in, a, in another situation, I can't do the same thing. I have to adjust um, and, you know, just recalibrate. Then you'll be able to adjust in any situation. But I do firmly believe, believe that, you know, if you can shoot a black person, you can shoot anyone. Um, but it's not the same, it's not the same case the other way around um there's just something very special about melanin and you can capture it you know decently but to capture it well to capture it in a stunning manner that takes a lot more work and more effort um than some some photographers have the desire to put the the work in for but you know for me it was it was actually something that kind of like was thrusted on me because um you know when i when i'm graduated and I moved down to the DMV I was originally you know trying to work with um the models that I thought were popping and in and, and publications all you really see are you know either white or fair skin models um not much representation you know it was, it was really whitewashed at least all the stuff that I was seeing on Instagram even from the people I was following um yeah. it was very very whitewashed so um and just like the, the images I wanted to see weren't really out there or not easily accessible at least. Um, so, you know, one publication, I, I was shooting a couple of different people and growing my platform, growing my portfolio. And one, pub, one publication was like, um, someone I had shot was the first person of color that had ever been featured in that, in that publication. And this was back in 2018. So it's not like this was like the 1970s where, you know, you know, black people were just starting to, you know, integrate yeah. into society, so to speak. That's this crazy. Was 20, this is 2018. Wow. Like, and, and just inside the publication, not even yeah. like, the like, cover. like ever on digital print ever. Um, and that was that, like, I, I remember looking at the email, like, like I thought I like I, I didn't know how to read because it just didn't make sense. It was just like what wow. like how, and this is also a publication in the DMV area. Granted, it wasn't huge. It was like a, a Vogue, yeah. But they had like a substantial following on Instagram, like 40, 40 50 thousand, and the DMV is full of black, beautiful black, talented models. Not even you know, forget models, just people. So yeah. like, it, it used to be um, called Chocolate City. It, bro, <laughs> like, I, I was gonna wear a Chocolate City shirt today. I was like, let me chill. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I was just like, from that moment, that's when I kind of was like, okay, there's something to be done there. That yeah. if there's still publications that are even comfortable saying this to someone of color. So a black wow. person, like, yo, we haven't had another person of color in this publication before. Like for them to even be comfortable saying that and have a paper trail of that. Um, if that was this, <laughs> you know, like if that was this day and age, you know that that would have been done, it would have been over because that would have been crazy. 
and it was crazy back then to me. So it was just like, all right, you know, um, I'm gonna definitely use and tap into all the beautiful black faces that I know and that I've seen on social media and, you know, try and just showcase black people in the most beautiful way possible. Um, and that's kind of how I started to pave my lane and pave my own path, sorry, yeah. um, with my portfolio and the content that I put out and produce. So, so even with that, I want to say like, that's, first of all, that's incredible. Like, that's just really like, it's like mind boggling to think that something like that is still happening today. Are people still having their first black moment, you know, within mm -hmm. 2020, which is, which is nuts. Um, mm -hmm. But even within that, like as you were talking through your process in, previously, um, I mean, I know you well that the details matter for you. You know what I mean? Like the devil's in the details, the magic's in the details. Like people really see that. So for, for me, like what about the, to hear from you, what do you find about the details that are so important? Like what, what kind of, where is that kind of, that piece for you? Um, I think for me, it's like, you know, when, some, when people take photos, um, or at least when some of people take photos and some of the photos I was seeing early on, um, obviously a photo doesn't come out. The photo that you see is not exactly how it comes out or how it was shot. Yeah. There's obviously been an editing process, you know, blemishes, um, you know, um, like acne marks, whatever, just retouching yeah. of the, of the individual. But I didn't like when people would take it a little too far yeah. and make the people and the subjects look like they were like rubber, rubber dolls. Yeah. Um, so what I did or what I sought to do was to find that balance of making a perfect photo while keeping all the details that make a person a person, you know, mm. the skin details, the pores, all of that. And once again, that was a lot of YouTube research, Googling, um, learning different techniques, um, frequency separation, like and just spending hours, like, like I said, just hours, um, you know, mastering the technique to really make yeah. it what it is and what people see now. Um, that's something I pride myself on is, you know, being able to make a very clean photo, but you can still zoom in and see someone's pores. You can still see the detail and not even like to the point where like I'm, I'm modifying someone's body or, yeah. you know, taking away the, the essence of the person. I'm just trying to bring them out in the cleanest, you know, um, most gratifying way possible while still making them human and still making them real. Um, mm -hmm. so that was always my goal, my desire. And that's, you know, how, what kind of, um, fed my motivation to learn different things and, and go that extra mile to, um, you know, capture that detail. Cause uh, like you said, uh, I like to say, you know, it's, it's the real, the real quote is the devil's in the details, but I like to say God is in the details. Absolutely. Um, you know. I think that's what just makes a photo even more striking. So I saw you um, had a, a crazy, like really big feature with BET, like a part, because of like a partnership with BET Networks. Um, so you're like, your, your, your career is bubbling. You look like you have a, a big body of work, right? So how do you balance your, your, like your personal life, private life with your work life? Mm -hmm. And I, I, or should um, I say, I guess I'm wondering for artists, like, is there ever a time where you do a, like a separation or turn that off? Or like, how does that work? Is like, do you feel like sometimes it's like all, in con all, all consuming a little bit or, yeah. So it's, is that something that like I'm still navigating the waters of because um, of me? Um, I don't know if you know, but like I'm, I still have a full-time job. So I still work full-time as a project manager, as an engineer. Um, on top of that, you know, I have my personal life. Um, and then I have my photography and my artist life. And with me, I'm so goal-driven that the, the lines between all of them become blurred because my, at the end of the day, my, my goals are all to be self-sustained on 
my work, my passion, and my photography. That is the light at the end of the tunnel for me. So um, everything I do, everything, every decision I make is, if it's not a step towards that goal and towards that light, then I don't even engage in it. I don't even consider. Um, and because I get so goal driven, it does it definitely does to tend to infringe on my personal life a little bit. And personal life being not only my day to day, but like my mental, uh, my emotional, you know, my um, yeah, just like my my mental and emotional health and well and well being. And there are definitely times where I have to take a step back and just, you know, say like, you know what, I'm I'm going on a break um, because apart from the fact that sometimes burnout is real and I've ex I experienced burnout like for the first time, like late last year and early this year, um, burnout is real one. And two, there are times when I'm just not inspired or not motivated. And that takes a very hit on my mental shit have i have i peaked already you know did i already did i pick um and those are times when i have to like really recenter and just reposition myself like okay you know i'm doing a lot right now i've got a full-time job i've got family that, that depends on me little brothers that depend on me I've got our gills um, attended to. Um, and then I've got Tayo, who I've got to worry about, you know, and make sure that I'm still pushing and treasuring. So sometimes I just have to, like, like I said, just reset and take a deep breath. And I, that usually involves me not doing any work. It usually involves me um, just focusing on other interests and, and and hobbies that I have rather than photography. Because as much as I love photography, as much as you know, it, it never feels like a job to me, like I said, burnout is another aspect that becomes very real. And when I start to take on too much at um, too much at a time, that's when it starts to feel like, okay, this is the job. And that's when that joy starts to get lost in translation when I'm doing a lot of stuff that that doesn't feed me or feed my um, feed that passion. Um, so that's all a long way to say that like, I'm still figuring out how to like balance everything. You know, I'm still figuring out how to manage all that I have going on, but it's, it's been a, um, it's been a learning experience and I've definitely learned a lot. Definitely taken some, I've learned from a lot of mistakes, learned from successes. Um, and I just hope to continue learning, continue building, continue growing. Do you feel like, um, how critical are you of your own work? Like I know there's so many photographers who they're like, oh, I do the editing in the shot, like while, while composing the shot, right? And then there's a lot of, some who just like so much editing after. Do you, cause I feel like a lot of artists all have the same like things. Like it's just like the overly critical of your own work, um, noticing like the smallest detail is that, I mean, it, mine is bad sometimes and I'm a Virgo. So we're like perfectionists. So mm. it'd be real bad sometimes where I'll post, even if I like post something, I'll be like, oh, I should have, I should have just increased the saturation some more. I just want to, but it's getting likes. So I want to delete it, but I won't like, you know, so yours is like big campaigns that sometimes go out to the world. How, how have, do you ever feel like super naked where you're like, I, oh, this isn't quite exactly the way I wanted it, but here we are. Oh yeah, huh, so many times. Um, and that's something that I thought was like unique to me, but it's definitely like a lot of artists experience that. Um, and to a point where it, it could be, you know, it could be to a fault and it could be de detrimental sometimes. And one of my mentors, he told me like, you know, sometimes you just gotta move on, you know? Um, Cause I know me, I could spend a week on one photo <laughs> if, you know, if I, if I really just cater to all the, um, to cater to the perfectionist in me, I can always, always find something I can change or don't like. And if I stare at a photo too long, you know, that's what happens. And so I've gotten down to the point now where it's like, 
the first edit that I like, you know, the first color scheme, the first, or maybe like the first or second, like I'll make two. And one of those two has to be it. You know, I'm not gonna continue making any more variants, any more, um, you know, alterations. Cause I could just spend hours, not even hours. I could spend, like I said, weeks in the same spot when I have a long line of work to do and so much that it has to get accomplished in, you know, in, in very small time constraints. Um, and beyond that, it just helps me realize that, you know, like, you know, there's, there's always gonna be more work, you know, there's always gonna be more work and I shouldn't get stuck up on the, the littlest details. Big details, obviously I tend to, and, you know, I, I make sure I modify those. But the little things, you know, I've learned like, you know, nothing's ever perfect, nothing's ever finished. So where I see, you know, a stopping point, I take that and I move on. Uh, Cause I, I'll honestly drive myself crazy. <laughs> Just, you know, trying to um, cater to each and every little minute detail that I can see can, that can be fixed. What is so your even... birthday? You giving me serious <laughs> love. <laughs> My birthday is in, what's today? It's in a month, January 27th. I, I knew it. I was going, I was like sad or Aquarius vibes. Cause it's like the <laughs> Aquarius have yeah. a really good, good vibe, like way of being extremely creative, but putting mm. a container around it, mm. being able to detach when they need to. And, mm. and I was thinking, you sound business savvy with that full-time job. So that had me thinking Aqu of Sagittarius. Sag yeah. But let me not uh, go too far because I have to go real. Nah, go ahead. Like, Come Just, on. Die. Die. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 I, I'm Are you a, you a sad shot? Yeah. My birthday was uh, on the first, the first of December, man. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. But, Happy belated, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. and then Appreciate also it. just because I would derail it and be thinking about that. And Josh was really about to ask another question. What was you about to nah, ask? Josh? I, I was gonna let you dive into that. I was just gonna I, honestly, people don't talk enough about the full time slash full time creative job you know what i'm saying like you have to have a full-time job to support your passion and then once your passion becomes you know something that you can actually support on its own it's like all right then you have some mobility but i was gonna actually touch on that a little bit because i don't think people talk about it enough and it's not talked about in the creative community i think people are so mm. consumed with like starving artists or like i have to like work this hustle or i can only do a part-time job there are tons of creators out here doing a full-time job and then doing a full-time job like i mean that's how i operate so i just wanted to see if you could talk a little bit more about that so you know i i always had a different outlook to um you know balancing both i always honestly like just being very you know transparent i used to think of myself as a failure for still having to have a full-time job still having to need something else to support myself um until you know i realized that it's really the smartest thing i could be doing you know i feel like a lot of times you always hear or the 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 rhetoric that's always fed is to you know jump into whatever you're, you're passionate about full time take that leap do it do it now if you fail you know you can come back da, 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 you know but like you know, go for it, jump, do the, da, 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 da. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that um, and uh, how many times I've thought about it. Um, even coming into this year, like I was so sick of my full-time job. I was like, you know what? Come end of the first quarter, no matter where I'm at, no matter how much I progress, no matter how good things or how bad things are going, I'm quitting my job and I'm taking that leap. Um, and I was set on doing that, you know, Come March 31st, I was going to quit and boom, COVID hit. And um, it was it was definitely God like telling me, relax, like you ain't going anywhere, you know? Um, and it made me realize how much of a blessing it is that one, I didn't quit my job prematurely because I would have been in a real bad place um, if that happened. And two, he just showed how much opportunity there is now for me to really have and chase both more than ever before. You know, I work in the construction industry, so there is always work going on and we barely have any time off. Construction is always, it's, 
you know, they work holidays even. Yeah. So I'm always expected to be there um, in person. And I'm always expected to like, you know, be fully there, you know, mentally. Yeah. Um, and now I can be anywhere. <laughs> you know, I can, I can work wherever, uh, work from wherever. And, you know, there, there were times this, this year where I was in LA two, two, two weeks at a time working the full-time job, you know, waking up earlier. 5 a.m. working till 2 p.m., which is like a 8 to 5 on the East Coast. Um, and then I'll still have a whole nother day um, to really get it in on my other full-time job, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, the stunt's still out at 2, so there's still a lot of time for me to, you know, get stuff done. Um, so there's been a whole world of opportunity now in this um, COVID world um, that I've been able to really leverage to be able to, you know, reap, you know, because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to cut off an, an arm that's feeding me right now. Um, you know, so like why, when I have the ability to do two, two things um, better than ever before in any other type of scenario or world, um, you know, why, why not leverage that and why not make the most of the most of that opportunity until, until one becomes too overpowering to have the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and even other, you know, creatives and entrepreneurs that I know, you know, they, even now they're telling me a different story. Like, you know, if I could have gone back, I definitely would not have quit. When I quit, I would have, you know, stuck it out a little bit more um, because, you know, they struggled. And that's not to say that I won't have to struggle when I take that leap. But my goal is, has always been to make that as seamless a transition as possible. You know, I have added turbulence when I can make it as smooth as possible, you know, be comfortable and make sure that, you know, when I'm taking that big step, um, I'm ready, you know, come, come whatever storm, come whatever dark night I have to face, I'll be comfortable enough through it all to, you know, not have to worry so much. Have you ever read Adam Grant's book, Originals or The Originals? No, I haven't. Yeah, Adam yeah, Grant's a professor. It? Yeah, he's a he's a professor of management, I believe, business management at uh, UPenn. But he's wrote a lot of books. But it reminds me because he had a chance to invest in Warby Parker because there were some students. You know, they were students over there when they first formed Warby Parker, mm. and he passed on the investment because he didn't think they were serious because they all four had their day job still. Hmm. And he missed out on a big investment. He was like, they did a billion dollars their first year. He said, when I had to start realizing was that a lot of entrepreneurs, when they're very smart, they usually keep their day job. They try to minimize their risk, right? And that's what you're doing. Because I feel like if you if you have a day job that can sustain you is and you can work both, why not? Because it puts less pressure on your art, right? Because who knows where your art would be? if it was all about just like, I gotta, I gotta book this gig. I gotta get people what they want. And, you know, so you might've taken, taken jobs that maybe have not have been for you, you know, or ter- taking right. certain clients on, you know, so it, it takes a pressure off your artwork. Um, huh. Right. So, all right, Josh, we, we want to get into album questions. What do you think? No, we can, <laughs> we can spend this however you want to spend it at this point. <laughs> Cause I it's kind of we- like, all right, what state, this stage of your career, like, I don't, and it's, and it's weird because I know it's like, I'm, how they say the eyes see out, they don't see in, right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm seeing over your career and with your work, like, you know, I'm amazed. I'm like, wow, it's brilliant. Like they, these are such, everything looks lush. You know what I mean? Um, Thank you. Your photography, and I don't know if you know this artist, um, Harmonia Rosales, she did Nas's recent album, album cover but she's a fine artist oil painter beautiful your photography reminds me of her paintings it's this lush almost like classical romantic it's so saturated it's luminous it's just like it's almost like another world like your work looks like to me what we might what I imagine if we had we're in an alternate universe where black people weren't oppressed on this planet Cause they look beautiful and thriving wow. and gorgeous. Like it's almost like a, like if their life had no bad luck, that's how beautiful and that shiny is... we could be. You know what I mean? Like your work, the people I'm talking, 
gorgeous. You, like, I was just you are like, gassing me up right now. That's probably the <laughs> no, best. this is real. This That's is probably real. the best compliment I've ever had. Um, no, like, really. Out, out like, compliment. For people, I'm like, we gotta edit in some some to write shots. Write that down. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> I'm like, crazy. we gotta edit in some shots because I was really like, wow, 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 like really to the point where it, it 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 didn't feel like photography because it's almost like it's it's not too good and like perfect, but it's like it's it's really gorgeous. But I also am like, you don't have too much falsehoods in it. It's not like this completely super fabricated set either you know what I mean mm -hmm. where some stuff is like it's film and you know film is so highly collaborative mm -hmm. but it'll be you know three set designers and then this department and that department and this I know it's not that big a production to get this image where I'm just like gosh they just people look literally lit from within right wow. so this is what I'm seeing <laughs> on your career so like we want to it's like we're about to ask you like if you could think of a piece of music, right? Like a, a, a album. Where what album? Amir, what? Amir, real quick, real quick, before we get to that question, because I yeah. do want to hear that. But even what you said, I wanted to tie into his gallery real quick. So we were them that dreamed, because even mm, what you're yeah. hitting on, what you were hitting on, the fact that like it puts you in this, the, the, your your work puts you in this realm where it's like, you, you if black people were kind of. At, what did you? What was the term? You used, you said it really I, well. I wrote I wrote it down because <laughs> I was what not you, playing. You said your work reminds me of an alternate universe where black people weren't oppressed. That is yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. Sorry, so thank you. To even in my whole whole year with that. Oh, you're welcome. You know, I, I feel like even though there's been oppression across the planet, but the, the closest people is your people. When I be telling some of my Nigerian friends, I said, "Y'all come, y'all come in the space is different." Mm -hmm. y'all be like who who is this person who is this mediocre white man talking to me like y'all become a <laughs> bossy y'all become with this real oh. bossy energy like you know what I mean and really? so it's like that's the closest thing I could put it's like a, people look regal and royal even when they're just in like this regular you know clothes yeah. even though there's a lot of regality in um just everyday attire and like a lot of like work garments or mm -hmm. you know what I mean but um, but but the gallery, we said we yeah. were those who dreamed. We, yeah, so we, yeah, were, we were them that, that dreamed. dreamed. We were them that dreamed. How, so first and foremost, it was dope. I, I did a virtual attendance. I couldn't attend in person because I was around the family and COVID. So I wanted to make sure I still showed support, um, showed some love. The work was beautiful. The space was beautiful. You designed it, which was fire. But can you talk a little bit about like just the 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 the, the, the purpose and the and the concept of the, of the gallery? Because we've already talked about how how the, the the work makes people feel, but how did you did any of that tie into how you encompass the gallery coming together? Of course. Um, so the 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 gallerist the person that owns the gallery reached out mm -hmm. to me in like July, um, after he had seen some of my work, some of my protest work. Um, he had reached out honestly for an online, they were doing an online archive of DC protest photos mm. after, you know, all the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor protests um, in the city. Um, so I told him, you know, go look at my portfolio, look at the photos you want to be included, the, the protest photos you wanted. And that's how he came across all my other work and reached back out. I was like, yeah, we need to do something. Um, and in July, in the peak of a pandemic, I'm like, okay, this is probably going to be in 2021, you know, future down, further down the line. Yeah. He's like, you know, what's your September like? And I'm like, shit, um, well, it's <laughs> open if you guys trying to do it, <laughs> like, yeah. honestly. Um, so, yeah, we started planning, you know, after that call. And I knew I just wanted to do something that had a meaning. Um, the first the first gallery I had done or first exhibition I had done, it was kind of just like a, a hodgepodge of all my work, you know, no real flow, no real um, story. Um, it was just like, yeah, this is all the dope stuff I've done, you know, come look mm -hmm. at it. Whereas this, it was more so a, a targeted approach as to exactly what I was trying to accomplish like Absolutely. anyone, like literally from how the pieces were put up to what walls they were on to the colors of the walls it was like i wanted you guys to like people to come in um and see one project and feel a certain type of way and then turn around and be like wow okay 
I feel another type of emotion. Like mm-hmm. I said, that, that journey of emotions. So they had reached out to be, for it to be, um, I don't know if you guys see my work, but there's this one project called Absorption mm-hmm. where it has the dark skin models on the rainbow, um, rainbow backdrop. Um, so they wanted it to just be an exhibit of all those images. Cause there's like, in the whole series, there's like 15 images. So that definitely would have filled the whole gallery up. Um, but I was like, no, you know, especially given what's going on this year, Absolutely. I wanted it to be, um, I wanted it to be impactful. So I had another project with Adobe in, wh- in which all these people were pulling a flag. Um, um, so I was like, you know what? I wanted it to be a stark contrast of, you know, a black celebration and, you know, black pain and, you know, it's for it to be that emotional journey of how, you know, we're very beautiful people, you know, we are stunning, gorgeous, strong, resilient, but we still have so much work to be, that that needs to be done um, for all those qualities to be at the forefront of what people think when they think of black people and not to have to worry about, you know, black death and oppression and systemic racism and all the pain that we have to endure and have endured. Um, So, the, the, the name, we were them that dreamed, comes from the Bible verse, you know, when God turned the captivity of Zion, we were like those that dreamed. So when I saw that verse, I was like during my devotional, it just like struck a chord, like, you know, th- th- that's it. You yeah. know, that's definitely what I'm going to name my, um, name my exhibit, because it's going to be like, you know, I wanted to be what the the title says we were them that dreamed us dreaming of that society of that world like you said you know that alternate universe where black people weren't oppressed you know where we're just stunning in our in ourselves and in our beings and our existence regardless of whatever we're wearing regardless of whatever we're doing you know black people just being celebrated and always being celebrated never having to worry about being um persecuted for our skin color um at all and that's the whole com- culmination of the gallery, you know, is that emotional journey of pain to um, pain to strength um, and just painting that picture and taking people on that journey. Wow. Yeah, man. Like... So how do you, with, like, with your two careers, because now, now I'm finding that really interesting because you're a project manager in construction. So... Was that your, that wasn't your first show, I'm guessing. Your first gallery show, was it? That was my first real, so the, the, the first show I did was me just renting out this space in Brooklyn, New York, um, like literally um, gluing my paper prints to like foam board. Um, wow. Like it was very, like it was, it was well put together. You wouldn't have thought about all this, but it was like, it wasn't on the same level as like having framed pieces in an actual yeah. art gallery. You know, it was very low budget, did the best of what I had. And it still was still was fire. You know, I'm still yeah. very proud of that. But it definitely was, like I said, not on the same level in terms of thought, in terms of execution, in terms of the meaning and the goal behind the gallery and exhibit. Um, so yeah, it wasn't my first show but it's my first gallery supported exhibit and I was actually supported by the gallery. So bring the show to life. So I guess it's, it's not even a question, I guess. It's just more like, it makes me like curious for what's to come because it's like, you have this construction background and just being able to project manage. So it's like what you could do with your built environment and the way you could display your work is probably going to be like crazy in the future, but that's just. A- amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> you probably already dream of certain yeah. things up, right? Oh, of course. But, I always try not to get too ahead of myself, you know, take things day by day, um, attack everything that I'm presented with, you know, with the, with the best of my ability um, to, you know, be closer to that light at the end of the tunnel. So, you know, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a good space right now, you know, um, I'm comfortable, you know, work isn't stressing me too much. I can't wait till I quit, but <laughs> um you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I always say I'm in a season of patience where God is really just trying to teach me patience because, you know, what I always tell myself is like, yeah, I want all these things and I want to accomplish all these things. But when if, what if I really got them like all in the next six months? 
then what you know then what do I have to like really look forward to so it's like I'm really more oh well, more of course yeah. <laughs> of course no of course <laughs> of course there will always be more but it's like yeah. you know I'm gonna look back on these days and really appreciate them mm. so why why rush that why rush that phase you know because I have no doubt in my mind I'm going to achieve all the things that I want to um so you know I should I might as well just enjoy the ride and you know yeah. let the story let the story build out itself and then it'll be like the other side of your business. Like I see a lot of like really great creative entrepreneurs and the business they build around, not just the art, there's the art, yeah. but then it's like all the business that stems off of it from mm-hmm. like merch to products to partnerships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause so I'm pretty the, sure the, the partnerships are really going to come through rolling through. Amen. Amen. I receive that. I receive that. So don't you have the, uh, the makeshift club as far as merchandise? Oh yeah. So uh, that's kind of like something that's kind of actually removed from, from mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it merchandise. It's more so like another, like I said, like like I said, beginning of the call, you know, I, we, I was always into fashion first. Yeah. Um, so Makeshift Design Club was like literally just another avenue for me and my partner. Um, my partner being my, one of my closest friends from college who... Mm-hmm. You know, when you meet someone, you just click, like yeah. we just, we just clicked, like just clicked. We just understood each other. Um, and that's been my boy ever since. So, you know, we, we decided like, yeah, we wanted to have our own clothing brand. Um, and the first, first line we did was trash. We didn't know anything about what we were doing. Um, we were just like too dumb two dumb college kids that just thought like, oh yeah, you know, we're fly. So whatever we create is fly and everyone's just going to buy it. And, you know, we don't, we going to rock out and make it, but that was not the case. Um, we had a lot that we had to learn. So mm-hmm. after that, like first failure, we just, you know, put everything on the back burner and really just, again, just learned and just built up our arsenal of, 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 of knowledge and skills to now be able to really do the things that we wanted to do the way we want to do them now um and you know that's that's just like another a passion project that i feel like you know if we just continue going at it it'll eventually turn into something makeshift is what it's called yeah it's called makeshift design club um it's like i got the the t-shirt in the in the the closet man (laughs) yeah (laughs) why you ain't weird you knew you knew you knew tail was here why you you ain't weird Oh, oh, you should have. You should have. You're right. I should have put it should've. on. So the support. Bro. Hey, listen, bro. <laughs> yeah. So it's not even really a clothing brand. It's more so like a, um, I would say it's more so like an art direction agency. I have a goal for that. So like, it's like partner with like different brands and be able to do all the content or roll out for product um, or even help design product. Um, but yeah, so. We don't, we don't want to limit ourselves to just clothes. Yeah, we make clothes. We got some hats dropping in a few. That's just us like, yo, we want a hat. So let's make this shit ourselves. Feel me? Yeah, that's the, that's make the things thing. you want, right? Exactly. Um, and that's where the name comes from, makeshift, right? Because yeah. we never really did things the orthodox way or the technical way. It was always very makeshift. Like, you know, we're just going to figure figure it out as we go. Um, but yeah. So that's that's that. Absolutely love that. So I mean, even you. the even like after all the accomplishments, like you've, I mean, I'm big on giving people their flowers as they progress through their journey. And I definitely want to make sure you get your flowers for the thing that you've accomplished now. Being the per, the humble person that I know you are, um, it's hard to you know count your accolades, count the things that you've done as you as you're living it. So I just want to make sure one, you get those flowers, and um, you bro. Not a problem, man. Not a problem at all. But at the same time, how would you describe the space that you're in? So the question we normally ask is like, what mm-hmm. album right now, what album would describe the point in your life that you're in right now? Hmm. Damn, that's, that's a good question. Because yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like you got to really think about it, right? Yeah. Hmm. I would say, um, shit. Sorry, excuse my language. Give me a second. Good. I got really think about. Cuss on here. Take your time. Be good. We um. Mm. You want to think about it a little bit, and we like talk yeah. about something else. 
All right, well, let's talk yeah, about yeah. inspiration and who you want to work with. Yeah, future. Oh, good kid, Mad City. Good kid, Mad I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. That is always the one. That's like such a that was really? so classic that so many people mm-hmm. relate to it. Yeah. No, why? Why? Either, either either that or uh, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Ooh. That's more so like the name, more so yeah. the name rather than the actual songs. But in terms of the actual okay, so, songs, uh, so good kid, good Mad, Mad City. City. Wow, what's up? What's, uh, what, how does how right where you are right now? Where you staying? Because um, it's like a get it out of the mud type of album. Ooh, you know, it's a real, it's a real, yeah. Not like not even really. Well, yeah, kind of self made, but also like having so such big dreams and not being able to see how you're gonna get them. You know, coming from where you've been, mm-hmm. coming from who you who you've been around, coming from the life experience you've had. You know. You know, songs that stuck stuck out to me are like money trees, you know, where it's like it's like a it's a poem that man's writing, you know, like how he has the desire to like really make it and you know, start out just rapping in his homie's car, um, you know, maneuvering the the friendships that he's had, friendships mm-hmm. that fell off. Um, you know, it's just a like I said, a real get it up mud type of album. And that's that's what I feel like where I'm at, you know, just grinding. You know, just grinding, trying to make something shake, trying to make something happen. You know, a good kid in this mad city, this mad world that we're in. Um, so yeah, I think, and I just love Kendrick too. So you gotta, you gotta stick with the, with the homie. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I thought okay. you said that's the homie. I was say that's the homie for real. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so you know Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> tell no, him, no, tell no. him he got some fans. Uh, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> soon. Hopefully soon. Right. So who do you who do you hope to work with? with us? I guess probably Kendrick. Right. You probably will let him do some creative direction. I would love direction. to work with Kendrick. Work with him. Oh man, most definitely. He is he's an artist. Um, I don't even call him a rapper. He's an artist. Like there are mm-hmm. very few people that call artists. Kanye is an artist. Um, Kendrick is an artist. Beyonce is an artist. You know, people that really they are you know, c- creating art with their words and with their, their skill set and their talents. Um, it's definitely Kendrick, definitely Queen B. Um, that's big. Kid Cudi, he's been a ch- like a childhood a hero of mine. Um, who else, who else? And then a, def- a couple other like models that I won't bore you guys with. Probably won't know any names. Speaking into existence, I, I know man. Models. <laughs> um, shit, okay. A Dutch. Um, you know Naomi. Um, Naomi would be classic. Naomi would be classic, and she's still modeling. It's, it's so crazy mm-hmm. to me. Um, who else? Like, it's, it's hard to think of on the spot right now. But in terms of public figures, yeah, I definitely would love to work with definitely Kanye. Um, to get him in front of my lens would be crazy. Even though I, I'm not, I'm in, I'm in a completely different past in terms of mentality and in terms yeah. of you know values right now um that's still one of my biggest inspirations probably my the biggest inspiration in, in everything i've ever done so for sure um but yeah it's just a couple of few so who inspires you need like photographers you were saying like before that were like kind of like inspirations but if, like currently where you are that you may like look and lean, not lean for inspiration, but just like look at and maybe get inspired again, you know? Mm. Um, Joshua Kissy, his work oh, inspired. Yo, he, Tumblr days. Like Tumblr to see days. where he is. Street, you remember street, street etiquette then? Yeah, street, street etiquette. etiquette. I forget, I'm sure he's uh, working a lot with one guy heavily, but I I remember him from the Tumblr days and I see the stuff yeah, he's still in there. I'm like, wow. It was him and, him and Travis Gumps. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Joshua Kissy, uh, Micaiah Carter, he's dope. Tyler Mitchell, um, Kennedy Carter. Like there are a bunch, a bunch of. Like this year for black photographers was crazy. It was up uh, like black culture, man. Crazy. Like there were newsstands where I'd look and it'd be like Essence shot by black. I mean, obviously Essence. Um, but like Vogue, a black photographer, Harper's Bazaar, a black photographer, um, you know, Allure, time, black photographer, Time Magazine, black photographer, just like in a row. 
And I was just like, damn, I've never like witnessed this much blackness and, you know, black people on such a high, high pedestal, you know, ever, to be honest, ever. So it was definitely inspiring, definitely inspiring to see. I mean, we got we to gotta keep it that way, man. I feel like the way that the culture is going, there's just so much inspiration in the black culture and photography and film and freaking tech. Like I, you can't even talk mm-hmm. about like it's just the spaces where black people are starting to flourish. It's literally, it's, it's just insane. It's, it's everywhere. Insane. Yeah. It's, it's, I, 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 I firmly believe it'll continue too. Mm-hmm. Like, I definitely think it will. I agree with you, man. Um, sure. So one of the things, I guess the, the best way to kind of ask this question is like, not necessarily what inspires you, but what keeps your heart beating? You know what I mean? As a creative, I feel like mm. a creative's heartbeat is something that, you know, we're dead once our once our creative heartbeat dies. You know what I mean? So like, what is that thing that keeps it beating? Yeah, or or you or like you said, fuels your creative juices. Like what yeah. keeps you going? It fuels my fuels creative you. juices. Um, hmm. Telling stories, telling stories that, you know, aren't, proliferated through the masses mm. um, you know uh just yeah using my my skill set to just like i said make people take people to a different place emotionally and mentally you know challenge people's thoughts um and just my goals as well just to motivate me and keep me keep me going um i know those goals will evolve i know they'll they'll expand they'll grow those are definitely the things at the heart of what keeps this engine running, you know. Would you, you feel ever like oh go ahead? <laughs> would you ever take a step into the film realm? Like act like storytelling for sure? Oh a thousand percent. A thousand, that's like that's also something that's I won't even say it's on the back burner. I've already started doing film work. Um but the thing is like I have so much I want to accomplish with photography first. Yeah. That I don't want to be a you know jack of all trades and a master of none. You know I'm trying to really get myself rooted and grounded and, and make it known to the world like yo I'm here, um, mm-hmm. and then you know start using that platform to be able to really tell stories and to really bring things to life um, in terms of emotion. And we would have to tap in on that too, bro. Absolutely, I know you'd be on that. <laughs> I, know, I know you'd be on that. Yeah, so definitely, definitely more so in terms of direction more than actually like shooting and editing myself. Yeah. Um, I think I had to, there was a point this year where I was like, you know what, I was only, I was only doing video work, yeah. like actually creating videos. Um, none of them I released um, because one, they weren't at the level of which I would want them to be at for me to release. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, with my photography being so advanced, I didn't want to start coming at like an elementary stage in terms of video which is why i'm still on the you know in the back behind the scenes i'm still working but like the actual mind of what i want to produce um and how i want it to look is there which is why i said like more so in a direct i think directing sense yeah. where i had to like be honest with myself like you know what I, I i i don't have the time to really do it all you know um i, I won't even say no i won't say i don't have the time there's always a time but i don't want to put in that time to, into video pr- into like actually editing and shooting video i'd rather yeah. put in that time into learning how to direct and learning how you know how to tell stories the best way possible and building a team to help me do that yeah i said directing is like in order to direct you have to know how everything moves it's like being the quarterback yeah. of the team exactly yeah. exactly yeah. but it's, it's great though because film is so collaborative that is it mm-hmm. is it's like Indie filmmaking is often hard when there's people who believe that they have to do it all, you know? And I get it. Sometimes you're like, this story got to get out there. So I got to direct it, produce it, edit it, you know? But it's best when you can find reliable people to do those things because it is like everybody Mm -hmm. brings a specific lens and everything to it, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... The last couple of things I know we want to make sure we touch base on with you is uh, two special things. Well, first and foremost, how do you feel like you've made your mark so far? I think I've made my mark by telling people it's possible. Mm. 
by just showing people that it's possible. Um, because I, I still like, I feel like I have to, that's, that's the most of a mark I've, I could have made so far. Yeah. You no, know, in terms of actual photography, I still have a lot more marks to make. But in terms of my journey, um, it's definitely been a fact that like I've shown people that it's possible. Mm. You know, you can do, if you put your mind to something as cliche as that is, you know, you can really do that and you can make it happen. Um, it's all, everything you need is all out there for you to take. You just have to put the time and the work in. Um, and I think, you know, from what I've seen, from what I've heard, that's definitely been uh, what I would say is the biggest mark I've made on people so far is inspiring them and showing them that it's possible. Um, even though that's something I still kind of get weirded out about when people say like oh you inspired me da, 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 da. Yeah. I got because I, I still I, I still feel like I haven't really done anything yet um, I still feel like I especially knowing where I want to go it's like I'm not really sure what's inspired you but then when I take a look back it's because you know I being where I am and being so focused on the future it's hard for me to really reflect on where I started you know mm -hmm. on those on those grad shoots I was doing way back when you know it's like it's I've come a long way and I have to be you know real with it myself sometimes like yo like in those moments where I start to feel down and too hard on myself it's like yo like in four years I've come a long way <laughs> you know from from doing alpha events to having a whole commercial with BET like yeah. that's <laughs> I've come a long way um and I'm proud of that myself for that, but I'm still focused so much more on, you know, where I really want to go and what I want to accomplish. But in that journey so far, you know, I can only imagine what my brothers think and, and feel when they, you know, look at me and what I do. It's like, those are the people I, I do it for, you know, to never make my brothers feel like, like anything's out of reach or unattainable. Um, so that's definitely the biggest mark I've made is really, showing people you know because people 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 need to see to believe um and the people in my corner have really definitely started to see um even even when i didn't believe i think these, these things were possible um it's like wow okay you know this is everything i want is out there for the taking absolutely i mean i, I think i incredible that you said that i was watching um Pharrell's Drink Tramps interview. I don't know if you had a chance to check it out, but Pharrell was talking mm. about how God blesses those people with success that he knows will give back. And, you know, mm. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about their story and their journey. And it's crazy because, like, I do reflect from time to time in the same space where it's like the people that I know who are the most successful are the same people who give back tenfold. You know what I mean? Like, mm. the fact that you are self aware of how you are, but you're still willing to let me tap in and show you what's possible. Let me tap in and show you how I did this. Like, it just speaks volumes, one, about your character, but about, you know, the future that you're, you're yet to have because you're going to continue to grow. You're going to continue to develop. You're going to continue to, to increase yourself. But at, along the way, you're going to touch lives, touch people, and show them what possibilities are there are. You know what I mean? Starting with mm -hmm. your siblings, but still can mm -hmm. go into strangers as well. Yeah. yeah. For sure, for sure. And um, I appreciate you, you know, appreciate you giving me that, that perspective and that, that look because... Um, you know, I, I, I never heard that quote before and it's yeah. definitely, it's definitely poignant. You know, I just try to realize no matter where I'm going, no matter where I'm at, like, like I said, beginning of the call, I'm still Tayo, you know, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, I'm still Tayo. I, and I never lose sight of who I am, where I started. Well, I, I don't always remember where I started, but I always know that like, I'm not anything. I'm not anyone too big to respond to someone too big to lend a helping hand. Um, you know, I, I try to make myself as approachable as possible because I know how it felt when I try to reach out to folk and it would, I landed on, you know, deaf ears and people, you know, were fake helpful. And I know that, you know, it sparked an even bigger fire in me like art right, that, you know, you know, that get Let's it see. out the mud mentality, like fine, even better. Like, you know, if no one wants to help, 
it makes it that much more gratifying when, you know, I really accomplish and get these things. Um, but at the same time, I feel like if I can make someone else's journey easier, why not? You know, yeah. there's so much, so much room at the table for everyone to eat. So I'm never, like literally ever slighted. Um, I think that's one thing I really like the most about myself is the fact that like, I really don't have that, um, that jealous mentality in terms of, in terms of, uh, you know, even when those like, those um, thoughts of comparison seep in, I'm always just like, I always just, you know, again, recenter myself like, okay, you know, they're killing it, but I'm killing it too. And there's still room for both of us to eat at this table. There's enough, more than enough out there for all of us to be, um, to prosper and to really be prosperous So, uh, yeah, I never, I'm always happy when I see another black person win, black woman win, black man Absolutely. win. I'm happy. Like I'm, I'm ecstatic, you know, <laughs> because it just shows how much more real it is for me to achieve that same success. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was, I was trying to, I was trying to be quiet because my heat vent was be, be loud. So I was like, if I don't talk, am I not gonna hear it? <laughs> I hope it wasn't loud. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, 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 I'm a, I'm a huge Pharrell fan, and that that interview is really good. But it's like you said about sharing the codes, and that's how you get blessed when you when it's mm-hmm. sure that you will share it because it's like um, as Black people in this country, we're already behind as far as we were locked out of access to so much, so like already that if we can pass the baton to somebody and it moves Mm -hmm. just someone further along in their process, it is, Mm -hmm. but but people could be quite stingy and it it, it could be cultural around like regions too, especially in the Philadelphia region, people can be be very resource stingy and they wait until you reach a certain level to then want to wrap their arms around you and say, Hey, you know, let me, let me give you the introduction. Let me, you know what I mean? Let me help open some doors for you. But I'm, I'm hopeful because a lot of the younger people are not that way because they are just tired, tired, Mm -hmm. you know, they're like, "Uh uh-uh, that's not how we do it. If that's the case, no one would have ever wrote a book, right? Because books are, are full of codes and that's what like you get generations of information and no one would have wrote books if it was not about sharing the information sharing the steps right um what are you what so tayo our our show is disruptors in the culture right and Mm -hmm. so the culture overall um and that's so you know culture is defined um i think one of the best definitions i saw was seth golden he's a marketing guru and he had culture is defined as people like us do things like this right Mm. like nike's Nike's cultural ethos is just do it. And I used to think just do it was a command of like, just do it, get to the workout, get to achieving when really it is like people like us just do it. We don't make excuses. We don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So as much as culture is established, culture is disrupted with new new thinking, new practices. Um, so we try to bring on people on our show that we only feel are disruptors in the culture, mm. right? whatever culture that is, whether it's art or just, you know, photography, how, what, how do you, what does it mean to you to be a disruptor? Paving your own path, doing things the unconventional way. Um, me, I'm self-taught. I don't shoot as technically as you should. There are probably a third, a thousand rules that I break um, at any, at any given moment during any shoot. Um, but I do things my way and I do things, you know, with, with no worry about anything, but what I want to accomplish. Um, I've always been a ask forgiveness rather than permission person type of person, you know? So (laughs) if I want something, I'm going to go get it by any means necessary. Like I said, you know, when there are times where people didn't find the answers or give me the answers it makes it even more gratifying when I find those answers my own way by myself um, and have that feeling of shock on that person's face, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I, for me, being a disruptor is, you know, getting after it in any way, getting as dirty as you need to, to, you know, to get what you need, and what you want. Um, and that's what I'm doing. 
Hey, this is Amira Smith, co-host of the Disruptors in the Culture podcast. You could be anywhere in the world right now on any video in the world, but you're here watching us. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share. Check out our next episode. Tell us what you think in the comments.